going everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to kick off this video by apologizing for the lack of uploads these past few weeks. I have truly been in the trenches of technical difficulties, but luckily I have sort of figured out a workaround to my problems just in time to get a video out to kick off the start of spooky season. And for this week's project, I really wanted to do something that was just fun for me. You know, just to kind of get my mind off my computer problems and everything else. So I'm just going to pop a quick warning up somewhere. Uh, if you're not a fan of like fake blood or fake gore, this is probably not the video for you. Um, you can check out one of my other videos. They are a little less gruesome, I guess. Uh, but, you know, if you're down for a little bit of blood, a little bit of guts, we can hop right into it. Our candidate for this makeover is this incomplete Halloween wolf doll. As you can see, she's missing an arm here, and it turns out that was actually just the beginning of her problems. Because as I went to go heat up her head and remove it from her body, well... I did a little bit too good of a job of removing it from her body. I took the neck peg right with it, but you know what? In the end, we're lucky for that because she's a, she's a zombie, all right? She's allowed to be missing her head a little bit. Well, I'll, I'll show you how I address that in a bit, but first I need to remove her hair and get the sort of neck peg that is now just sort of lodged in her little dome out of there. Once I have all of her hair cut down about as short as I'm going to get it, I cut open a slit in the back of her head to pull the neck peg out, and I start scraping out the inside of her head with a flathead screwdriver in order to pull all of the remaining hair plugs inside. Typically I do this before I slice the head open, so having it already open made it a little bit more difficult as uh, I kept wanting to stab myself in the hand with a screwdriver, and that's not terribly safe. But you know, what can you do? Once her hair is all removed, I go ahead and remove her ears. I just decided I didn't want them. You know, I think her ears are cute. I like that one of them does a little leg flop over. But for this doll, I just, it wasn't fitting my vision, so I'm cutting those off. Once those are gone, I can finally remove her face with 100% acetone. I decided to also remove all the paint from her scalp, and once she's a completely clean slate, I can hop right in with acrylic paint for her face up. So I'm doing something a little bit different here. Uh, I feel like typically I go in with a very pale gray to sort of block out the scleras, the whites of the eyes. But this time I decided to go in with red. I just really wanted to go for that like really infected sort of look, you know? I feel like there are different types of zombies that sort of come about in different ways. Some of them are like, dark magic, necromancy, others are like a virus, and this one I'm going more in the sort of virus infection direction. Oh, I rhymed. Congratulations, me. <laughs> but once her uh, scleras and irises are blocked in, I'm going in with black paint to sort of do her lash line. And lately I've been really into like painting on these, these sort of like chunky little lashes. I don't know, I think it's a, a fun look. It's different than what I usually do. I, I typically go for like a clean sort of eyeliner, eyeball look, but I don't know, I, I like it. It sort of reminds me of being in middle school and wearing too many layers of mascara, <laughs> which I guess in this case is appealing. Now you're gonna see me futz around with her eyeballs for a while. <laughs> I, at first I went in with this like orangey red to sort of block out the pupils. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna spread that around to maybe like make the delineation between the iris and the sclera like more muddled. 
but and then I added in the pupil but I didn't really like that look so I'm gonna go back in with some yellow and a bit I, I just kind of kept fussing around because oh wow <laughs> you're hearing me react to my own footage in real time I just like forgot how I, I did her eyes I guess I'm really just like spreading paint around now I think I was going over with some more red to like make less harsh lines but then paint was still wet and so it just spread everywhere but once I get the yellow iris back in I start to like it again and I don't really mind the sort of leftover black streaks that end up happening it it's sort of just like irritated infected veins or something and for her eyebrows I really want to keep it fairly light because I feel like I don't know zombies don't have terribly noticeable eyebrows and as you can see I'm also adding veins because I was just in the mood I really struggled with them pretty hard as well but in the end, after like all the blushing is done, they don't stand out so much. Spoilers, <laughs> you have to trust the process sometimes, but I just sort of make some of them very light, some of them a little bit more harsh, to just like make the illusion of some of them being deeper under the skin than others. And I kind of focus them on the top half of her face, like her forehead and around her eyes just because I have some plans for her mouth that I didn't want to get like too like messy and muddled so uh, that's I feel like that's not the best phrasing for it because it does in fact get messy but crowded is the word I'm looking for I don't want to get too crowded but after I lay down the base of light red sort of veins I go back over with a very dark almost black red to sort of just add some more emphasis making sure the lines are thinner this time once again just going for that nasty like there's some messed up virus poison just pumping through veins Once I finally have all the veins squared away, I can do the really fun part. I really like doing these very bloody, like, just ate someone mouth looks, you know? I just think they're really fun. I simply think that girls should be allowed to look like they just ate someone a little bit, you know? I think it's a good look. <laughs> So I'm going in with like different shades of red and black towards the center once again because I feel like a lot of zombies they have like gross sort of like black blood ichor that just they're just oozing everywhere so I want like a mix of like blood like she just ate somebody and maybe like gross zombie blood like maybe she's been coughing it up because she has a bad illness. <laughs> Once it looks like she's finished her meal, I could head right in with chalk pastels. So for this, I'm doing a heavy mixture of red and black around her temples, around basically the whole perimeter of her face, to just sort of help make those veins blend in a little bit more, and once again, just get that really like dead, corpsey sort of look. I also go in pretty hard with the blushing around her cheeks just because I think it adds like a little bit of cuteness and I don't know maybe you make her look a little bit feverish or something just to I just I just want her to look gross. I want her to look a little bit gross, a little gnarly, but also kind of cute, you know, adding a little bit of blush to her nose and sort of darkening around her eyes to bring out a little bit of the eye molding that you couldn't really see with just the paint alone. Classic eye bags because, you know, I don't think she's uh, been sleeping well, if she's been sleeping at all. 
you know i feel like i she's like a zombie but like the look in her eyes i feel like she's like a smart zombie you know like she still has like a personality in there but she just needs to like eat people and is kind of dead but you could you could do that and still have a <laughs> have a winning personality speaking of winning personality <laughs> The most self-congratulatory segue I've ever done. If you want to see more of my winning personality, consider subscribing to the channel. I put out new videos fairly regularly, and I have a lot of things planned for the month of October. So if you don't want to miss those, go ahead and subscribe and like this video if you're liking it. Or wait till the end. Make sure you really like the whole thing before you make that decision on the like button. It's a, it's a big choice. But now that her face is done, I can hit it with a few layers of liquid sealant and move on to her body. <laughs> so first I must address her missing appendages. So I start by filling her open neck hole with some hot glue and dragging some down the sides to look like dripping blood. I do a similar thing for her arm, except I stick a toothpick in there where the original arm peg would have gone to look a bit like a jutting bone sticking out of her wound and just dragging some hot glue around it to look like sinew and blood or whatever, just to make it a little bit more gnarly. And for her outfit, I actually had a lot of the elements of the original outfit that this doll came with. I decided to just use those because it was pretty cute. I cut the orange undershirt part of her tank top off to give it a more of a midriff bearing look because I want to do something there, little spoilers. And I ended up making some adjustments to her shorts because you see me struggling here for a while to see if I can get her suspenders to lay correctly. And I eventually just give up and snip them and glue them to the other side of her shorts so that they're a little bit more taunt and fit a little bit better. I now can do the very fun part of distressing her outfit. So I decided to like do her distressing and all the blood stuff all at the same time. So I'm cutting some holes in her shorts, some holes in her socks, to look like she's been weathering the apocalypse for some time now. I also decided to add a little bit more of hot glue gore <laughs> to her midriff. I'm sort of making it look like maybe she got sliced open. She's got a little bit of a little bit of gut spilling out. Not too much. It's not very detailed. Uh, it's very simplified, but just the sort of texture that hot glue takes on, I feel like at that small of a scale, it, it's enough to make it look a bit gnarly. And once I have everything out the way I want it, I start adding the blood. So I am going in with a very dark red and I'm really working with this wet for most of the time. I don't really let any layers dry in between. I'm just like smooshing around a bunch of dark reds, blacks, and just mixing it all together on her body to sort of get a very organic look. Once again, I'm going pretty dark with the blood because I want it to look like gross, you know? Gross zombie blood that's kind of black. And for her socks, I'm really making sure to wet it a lot so that the sort of paint spreads pretty far as I lay it on there. So I'm doing a mixture of straight up black paint and red here to just make it look like she's been just getting filthy. <laughs> Make sure to get both sides because even though we mostly see things from the front, you know, it's good to make sure you have a full 360 coverage. And I focus a lot of dirt and grossness on the bottom of her feet because I decided that I didn't want to give her shoes because I didn't have the shoes that go with this doll. So maybe she lost them and she's just been sort of walking around barefoot with this one sock and so really dragging all of her stuff through the mud. <laughs> As you can see, I like to sort of go in there with my fingers and sort of like tap out the paint that I lay down just because I think it gives that sort of, I don't know, it gives a really organic look to me of like, if you've ever seen 
like a real dirty zombie in a movie, I feel like it has that sort of like stippled, sort of smudgy effect with everything. So just dabbing everything with your fingers really helps achieve that look. I decided to add another painted wound to her leg, and I just add a dark stripe to start, but I'll add more to that later, because as that was drying, I decided to go through and just add more schmutz to her other arm and really make sure to grime up her hand to make it look like she's been, like, tearing into a victim or something. Now I can go back to working on that wound, so I add some lighter red, keeping it darkest at the edges to sort of create a shadowed look, and I think it's fun to think about how gravity would sort of affect a wound and blood, and think about like where it would drip and, you know, where it would land and stuff, so that was a very fun part of this process. For her hair, I decided to use these yarn strands that have very similar color scheme to her original hair, and I'm just gluing those around her head with some hot glue using the tip of the gun to sort of smooth them down and make sure that they are secured. I work my way around to this one ear hole, and I decided to turn this ear hole into like an open head wound. And here I'm carefully gluing some strands around the wound, using my thimble to sort of smush them in place, and just working around to make sure that everything lays right. And because I'm sort of going to be hitting this with some more hot glue around the edges of the yarn to sort of look like blood or whatever, brains maybe, like sort of oozing out around. It doesn't matter if it's super clean because it's getting covered in, in gobs of glue anyway. And with all things like this, it's, you know, you're allowed to be a lot more loose because it's supposed to be a little bit, you know, grimy and grungy anyway, so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Once everything is glued down and cooled off, I can hit it with some acrylic paint, following basically the same method that I used for all the other bloody wounds on her body, though I'm making sure to sort of get some blood sort of saturating some of her hair around the wound, like it's sort of soaked into it a bit. And to do that, I just sort of wet the hair with my paintbrush and daub some, you know, watered down red acrylic paint around them and just smoosh it around my hands like I've done everything else. Now I'm just hitting those wounds on her body with some Mod Podge directly out of the jar with my fingers. I just, I don't like ruining brushes, and yeah, I could rinse them off thoroughly after I'm done, but I'm so bad at that, so I just smush them around my fingers, and it helps give it a little bit of a shinier look and help preserve the paint a little bit. I decided that she wasn't quite finished and needed another little accessory. So I'm stealing this arm from a skeleton garland a friend of mine gifted me some time ago. I'm hitting it with some hot glue to look like some leftover flesh on the bone. And I'm using this toothpick to sort of delineate the space between the two bones and sort of like stretch the hot glue around it so it looks a little bit more like strings of muscle fiber or flesh or all those anatomical words that I do not know. <laughs> 
And once it is dry, I am able to hit it with the similar paint method that I've done with every other bit of gross thing that I've done in this video. I just thought with the scale of this arm, it would sort of feasibly pass as maybe her own arm that she's just sort of carrying around, unable to reattach to her body. Or maybe it's someone else's arm that she's just carrying around and saving for a snack for later. <laughs> Once the paint is all dry, I could also hit this with a coat of Finger Mod Podge. And with that, she's ready for assembly. As you can see, her head can just slot right on top of her body and it just sort of stays on with friction. And I give her her final accessory and she's complete. And here's the final result. As you can see, because of her lack of neck peg, it sort of opens you up for more posing possibilities because you can take her head right off of her shoulders and put it in her hands. You know, maybe she's tired of it. She just wants to carry it around for a little while. Um, but that's it for this video. I hope to see you guys next time. Love you, bye.